pieces. I'm going to show you how to make a very simple cup mold. You'll need a cup, obviously, and a sharpie. Draw a line inside where you plan to make a cut in the silicone after you've poured your mold. Then draw a circle around the top area, which you're going to need to cut out to pour in through where your silicone is supposed to be. Here's a pirate head sculpted by John Neal at johnneal.com. You'll see the blue wax actually touches the earlobes and the back of the head. That's going to help the air escape when I pour in resin into the mold. They're referred to as vents. I'll put the cup over the top and then run hot glue all the way around it. I'm positioning the sharpie line in the back where I plan on making my X-Acto knife cut to open my mold. Besides the top quality silicone, the thing I like is that Hobby Silicone sells smaller versions for the hobbyist such as this 2 pound kit and this 10 pound kit. You can buy just what you need to get your job done. I should be using a 2 pound kit, but I'm going to use this 10 pound kit the cup weighs 20 grams, so I need to tear that out to zero. And now I can pour my silicone in to the proper measurement. I would probably have a little left over at 500 grams. Now when it comes to adding the catalyst, I've got 500 grams on my scale, so I'm going to tear it out again back to zero with the silicone still on there. Now I'm going to weigh out 50 grams, which is 10% of the catalyst. The green catalyst I'm using here has excellent stretch and very good tear strength. It also has very good mold life and library life. The silicone is done being mixed when it will be an even green color. Without the aid of an evacuator, you'll need to do what's called a high pour. This is the second best way to remove bubbles out of the silicone so you can make sure that you get all those important details in your sculpture. The last thing that you'd want to do is just pour one big glob in here because you could guarantee yourself that you'd end up having a silicone that would have holes in it like a sponge. Just keep pouring on the side and let the silicone flow into the face. Don't pour directly on top or that could cause air bubbles. Now that the silicone is cured, start slicing your mold apart using a zigzag pattern with your scalpel or X-Acto knife. Be very careful when you get to your actual sculpture not to cut it. The reason why I cut the zigzag pattern is so that the mold will key together perfectly and leave a real nice seam edge when I make my casting. I'm going to take a good look on the inside of the mold and then toss in a little baby powder and then hit the mold against my hand a few times and then blow it out. You'll want to check to make sure that the baby powder is not stuck inside the eyes or the mouth or any small details. Now it's time to start our casting process. You'll need a box of tongue depressors and small cups and some baby powder. And let's not forget the latex gloves. I'm using a very inexpensive kit of MPK70 2 pound casting resin. Here's my mold. Put two cups out, take part A seen here of the MPK70 casting resin, pour part A into the first cup, then pour an equal amount of component B into the second cup. It's so easy, even a kid can do it. I don't like to leave uncatalyzed resin in either cup, so what I do is I mix them both into each cup to make sure that both sides are activated. I also want to mention that this resin is odorless. As I'm pouring the MPK70 resin, the air is escaping out those small holes that you see. So the little parts like the earlobes and the back of the head will remain intact. You can purchase the casting resin with either a 5 minute or 10 minute gel time. For instance, you may want to use a longer gel time for more complicated bigger molds or if it's hot in your studio. After 20 minutes, it's ready to demold. I slip it out, pull out the part, and it's a great casting. But as you can see, it's hard to see completely white. For my next casting, I've added a black pigment called All Tints, just a very small amount. I like casting in a gray color, 
so that when it's cured, you can really see all the fine details that it picked up. And I'd like you to see them too. Once the resin's cured, I can demold it. This usually takes about 20 minutes. Unless it's a little hotter, then it might be 10. But 20 is a good standard. You probably wondered why I had such a big pour spout. It helps actually push the air out of the mold so you have less bubbles in your piece. Now take a good close look. I'll bring in the sculpture just a touch closer so you can see the face. The eyes, the teeth, and even the earlobe and, and rings in the ear all came out perfect. I've compiled a list of materials which you'll need to do this project. Order today.